In this video, I will talk about the changes coming up in the next version of React, version 16.3. I will focus on the changes around component lifecycle hooks. Here is a list of all the component lifecycle hooks available in React. There's quite a lot of them, and whether you're new to React or an experienced developer, it might still be unclear how and when uh, to use each one of them. I will not go over each one of them and explain you how they should be used, as I want to focus on the changes coming up in the next version of React. But I'll link a great article from Scott Tomes in the description. React 16.3 brings a bit of a spring cleaning in lifecycle hooks land. Let's just discover those changes together. As you can see, three lifecycle hooks are being deprecated. Let's review them quickly. First off, component will mount. This is actually a good thing because there was no real use case for using um, component will mount. If you need to set up your state, this is something you should do in the constructor. And if you need to act on the DOM, then component did mount was the place to do the changes. And actually, Facebook recommends now to use component did mount instead of component will mount. A bit in the same line, component will update is being deprecated and the library now recommends to use component did update instead. The last one, component will receive props, which is used to change your state based on changes in the props, is being removed, and a new lifecycle hook to, re um, to replace it is being added, get derived state from props. Quite verbose, but quite self-explanatory as well. It has a bit of a strange signature, so let's dive in into an example together. In order to see how to use get derived state from props, we will first build a small use case. So let's create a component. We'll call that component names, and that component will receive two different props. The first one will be a list of names, and the second one will be a color. And a color is of course going to be a string, and it's as well required. Perfect. So we have our prop types defined. Let's use them now. Instead of rendering a div, I will render a list, which is a compo an existing component. That component needs to have the color specified, which we will take from our props. And within the list, I will render the list of names that I received from the parent. And of course, we don't forget to specify the key to make React happy. All right, so what you can see on the left, on the right, sorry, is the list of names rendered, and then we have a button to change the color of the borders. Of course, we're uh, building something meaningful here. So as you can see, we can successfully change the colors. Okay, so let's first improve this application even further. It would be better, of course, if the names were sorted alphabetically. Thankfully, we have a utility function to do that. So I will have the sorted names, which is the sorted version of the names we receive as props. And that's those are the ones I will render instead. Nice. So we have a sorted list of names, and we can still change the colors. This is perfect. Let's investigate the console. The utility function defined to sort the names is as well printing in the console every time it does so. And what we can see is that every time we click to change the color of the borders, the list of names is sorted again. And this can be heavy uh, if the list is very long. Uh, in terms of performance, that's not ideal. So let's see how we can improve the application to solve that problem. Instead of sorting the list of names every time the component renders, we will only do it when it's really necessary. And a good place to start is, of course, in the constructor. Here, we will define a state where we will sort the list of names. And now, instead of sorting in the render, we will simply use the state we have defined in the constructor. And fix the typo while we're at it. Now, every time we click to change the color of the borders, we see that we don't sort the array anymore. 
Now, this is nice, but if the parent components decide to change the list of name we receive, the constructor won't be called, and we will never sort against the, the, list, the new list of name we receive. And that's why we have the component will receive props, which receives the next props as a parameter. And in here, what we can do is check if the next props dot names are not the same as the ones we have already. And if that's the case, we will update the state and change the list of names, the of sorted names, with the new names we received. And this still works as before. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, component will receive props is being deprecated, so we need another solution. And I mentioned the new lifecycle hook called get derived state from props. So let's see how we can solve this problem using only get derived state from props. Get derived state from props is a bit of a strange signature. First of all, it's a static method, so we don't have access to anything on the instance. We don't have access to this.props, we don't have access to this.state, etc. or any of the methods of the class. The way it works is the function will pass you the next props and the value of the previous state. And the function is supposed to return the new state. It can return null in case you don't want to make any changes in the state. So let's refactor our code to make it work again. What we could do here is return a state, right? Where sorted names would be the sorted version of the props we receive. What you will see here is that we will have an error and React will tell us that we still need to initialize the state. So let's do this. We'll define a state where sorted names is by default an empty array. No, React is happy and what you can see that it's still working and we're sorting the, the list of names, but every time we render, we're sorting the array again. This is because we're not comparing if the names from the props change or not. So how can we fix this with this new signature? The problem is that we only have access to the next props. We don't have access to the previous value of the names, so we can't really make a comparison here. So to solve this problem, what we could do is store it in the state. So by default, again, it's going to be an empty array. But what we do here is that if in the previous state, the names we stored earlier are not the same as the one we're receiving, then we will update the state. The sorted names will be the sorted version of the list of names we received. And then we'll also store the new list of, list of names we received. Otherwise, if it's still the same list of names, then we return null to tell React that we don't want to make any changes. And of course, small comma missing. All right, and now I can change the color of the borders and we're not sorting every time uh, the list of names. So this is get derived state from props in a nutshell. Thank you for watching.